Hi, on the workbench today, I have yet another thermal imager to review. This one is a Must2 ET692D. Banggood provided me this unit for review, and I will provide the product link along with the coupon code in the video description below. And be sure to check it out on Banggood's website if you are interested in getting one after watching this video. I have reviewed many thermal imagers on this channel by now. Among the ones I have reviewed, the highest thermal resolution is at 256 by 192. The ET692D here I have, by comparison, has a thermal image resolution of 320 by 240. Besides the IR sensor, ET692D also has a visible spectrum camera, and the images taken can be a blend between the IR spectrum and the visible spectrum, which can be useful in some situations. Just like digital cameras, Sometimes the megapixel counts are meaningless. Higher thermal image resolution doesn't always translate into better thermal image quality either. It really depends on the sensor and optics and the post-acquisition processing. We'll have to try out and see later on. Nevertheless, the pixel count of this unit is about 56% higher compared to the 256 by 192 thermal cameras I have reviewed before. But as you can see here, the aperture of the IR lens is quite small, so there most likely will have some impact on the thermal image qualities. The ET692D comes in this rather generic box with everything you need to get started, including a USB charger, a USB cable, and a North American power adapter. And of course, it also comes with this relatively uh, funky looking carrying case here. You can definitely tell from this generic white box that Must Tool is just one of the many brands this ET692D model sells under. A quick search suggested that this model is also sold under at least another brand called Tool Top. And after a little bit more digging, it seems that these ET692Ds are essentially the same as the HT19 as well. Anyway, as we have seen again and again, this kind of rebranding is really common among Chinese electronics products. Before powering it on, I just want to point out a few things. The first thing you can't miss is this integrated protective cover for the IR lens. This is really a big plus in my opinion. I think all thermal imagers should include the lens cover like this. Otherwise, the lens can easily get scratched or get dirty if you are not careful, especially when you need to carry it around on your job site. And the next thing you will notice is that this thermal imager does not have an SD card slot. It only has this micro USB slot on the side for connecting with your PC. And this is because it has a 3GB flash memory built in. Now, 3GB storage may not sound like much these days, but given the resolution of the images and videos, this storage space is actually more than adequate. Anyway, time for us to power it on. Oh, there's something stuck here. Let's remove that first. I don't think this is a protective film because, well, anyway, let's try to peel it off. Ugh, it left some residue here and I probably should have just left it long. Anyway, it doesn't matter and I'll clean it up later. That sticky residue really bothered me. I had to go off camera and uh, clean it off. And anyway, right now it's all good. Let's power it on. Now, it's typical for these devices to take some time to boot up. But that's due to the limited processing power on board. Now, you can see a picture of a car. So, presumably, this is geared towards auto mechanics. Geez, I haven't seen a car with carburetor for a long time. And now, it booted up. So, it took roughly 16 seconds for it to power up. This is actually not bad at all compared to the Unity UTI 690B I had reviewed before, and that one, if I remember correctly, took at least 10 seconds longer to boot up. And by the way, the frame rate of this camera is spec'd at 9Hz, which is relatively slow compared to some of the 25Hz ones I had reviewed previously. Obviously, the higher the frame rate, the better, but at 9 frames per second, it is still quite useful for most of the applications. What we're looking at here is the spectral analyzer in the background. Now, the image looks quite grainy when the background is essentially uniform in temperature. 
The first thing I immediately notice is that the imager dynamically adjusts the temperature range mapping to the color palette. So the color palette essentially is applied to the current temperature range that is in view. It would be nice if the temperature range can be set statically, as when the temperature differential is small, any minute change can change the color assignment drastically and make it harder to compare between images taken at different times. With that said, I have not seen this feature offered in any of the standalone handheld thermal cameras that I have reviewed so far. Another downside of this dynamic temperature range mapping is that the noise will become more pronounced just because the entire color palette only spends a few degrees at the most. Now the noise obviously also depends upon the quality of the sensor used. One key parameter of the thermal imager is the thermal sensitivity, or NETD, noise equivalent temperature difference. It basically tells you what is the smallest temperature difference can be distinguished by the imaging sensor. For the ET692D, it is specced at 70 millikelvin, which means it can detect a 0.07 degree temperature difference. This is slightly inferior to the 60 millikelvin and 50 millikelvin numbers we saw in some of the other thermal imagers that I had reviewed on this channel before, and this most definitely contributed to the elevated noise level we're getting here. Also, there is a balance between the maximum temperature measurement range and thermal image quality. The ET692D can measure between minus 4 Fahrenheit to 662 degrees Fahrenheit without having to switch ranges, like the UTI-690B. But the downside is that the image will be noisier because of the wider range. Now, this could be a pro, also could be a con. It really depends on the intended application. Let's take a look at the menu options here first. And you can see here we have uh, not that many options. The first one you see is image registration. What that really is, is essentially to align the visible spectrum camera and the IR sensor. Actually, before we do that, let's uh, do this. You can use these two arrow keys to switch the level how much you want to blend these two images together. So let's say we want to do this. And uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see that those two images, the red one is essentially where we saw the spectral analyzer and the actual optical image. They're not quite aligned. So let's use that uh, image registration to align them. So if I press the button here, you will see that the optical image is actually moving down. Now you can see they are actually aligned. Of course, you can also use the left arrow and right arrow to move the image around. You get the idea here. So let's move it back. So once you finish the registration process, these two images should be aligned. You can see here. And that actually comes in very handy when you try to analyze what is in view for your IR image. And you can always switch between the optical and IR. And you can do it in four steps. Now let's take a look at the other menu items. Here you have the images, that's what you have taken, and that will be stored here. And the videos, yes, this ET692D can record videos as well, which is a huge plus. The Unity UTI-690B, for instance, does not allow you to record video. To start recording video, you just simply, actually let me just show you here, before we go too far here. So let me cancel this out. To record video, all you do is you press and hold the trigger button here, and you do a long press, it will ask you do you want to record. Now you can do it two ways to answer this. You can either press manual, which actually corresponds to the yes, you can see here, and you press enter to stop recording. Now that's not very intuitive, actually it did take me a few times to figure that out because it was not clearly indicated in the manual. But anyway, so you can do that or you can press and hold, and press it again, this time short press, it will start recording. It would be nice if you press it again, it stops recording, but no, the only way to get out the recording mode is by pressing the enter button. So that's how you record a video. Now let's continue. Here we have color palettes, and we have this five predefined color palettes you can select from. It would be nice when we're switching between these 
the background updates automatically, but it doesn't. Not only we have to select, we also have to get out of the menu here before it takes effect. So this is a little bit annoying. This one is probably not very different than the one we had before. So let's uh, come down here and uh, change to a white. Let's say we do this one and we select. Now we have to press menu again. So that's really three steps, which is really not very convenient. Anyway, so you can see that now we change to this white color palette. So let's change it back as uh, the first one probably is the most colorful one. And the next one is emissivity. And by the way, in order to get accurate temperature readings, you will need to know the emissivity of the material you are measuring. The default one on this camera you can see here is 0.95. And I like the fact that emissivity is actually displayed on the screen so that you know whether you have the correct setting for the material you are measuring. So let's see what's next. Now, of course, we have uh, settings. You can change the auto shutdown time the intensity of the display, the language, the unit, and the time format. And the spot, actually this one is currently on. What it does is it shows you the center temperature and also shows you the lowest temperature and highest temperature on the scene here. So that's what we actually are looking at here. You can see here we have the 70.1, that's the highest, and 64.5, that's the lowest, and the center spot, 66.5. So that's what that uh, spot is. And I really like that actually. So now let's take a look at the version. And the version is 2.1.19. So that's actually all the menu items here. And you can see that it's very, very easy to operate this unit. Now let's take a look at an Arduino board and a switching power supply and get a feel of how well it works if you want to use it for electronics. I'm setting my expectations pretty low as this ET692D was never advertised for this use case that we're testing here, but it should give you some reference points when comparing with other thermal imagers I have reviewed. Here is an Arduino board that I had powered on for a while now, and let's take a look. Yeah, you can see that the thermal camera was not able to pick up any significant details on this board, which is a little bit of disappointing as, to be very honest, I had expected somewhat better results given the 320 and 240 resolution here. The focus of this thermal camera is fixed, but the manual did not specify a minimum distance, but I can see that it doesn't really matter as I can go very far here and very close it just seems that the image is quite a bit blurred. And here's a view from the thermal camera of the switching power supply. And again, as you can see, that is also lacking quite a bit of detail here. And if you recall, the other thermal cameras we used, we could see some of the components here, but here it seems it's just quite blurred. And if you take a closer look here, on the top, we have these resistors up there, and you can't really tell them apart from the thermal image here. And if you recall, when we used our UTI 690B, we could see each individual resistors back there, but we can't with this uh, thermal camera here. I took a video earlier examining the engine bay of one of my Hondas, and the video quality was actually quite decent. And you can see the word IV tech on the engine cover. So for the intended use, when the objects are at least a few feet away, this thermal camera is actually doing a decent job. But due to the limited aperture, the image does not appear to be as sharp. One unique feature of the ET692D is that it comes with PC software and you can adjust the blending of the superimposed visible spectrum image and IR image after you have taken the picture. So basically every picture you take, although saved to a single JPEG file, it essentially contains two pictures, one for the IR and the other for the camera. I really like this implementation, as if you recall for the Unity UTI 690B, every picture you take is saved into two files, one for the IR and the other for the visible spectrum. And it is really not that convenient. 
You can also do different temperature measurements with the software. Now, the software is just an image analyzer tool, and it does not require connectivity to the device. Obviously, the format of the image is specific to the ET692D. I'm going to show you a few more thermal images I have captured, and in the meantime, I will share with you my thoughts of this Mustool ET692D thermal imager. I really like the physical design of this thermal imager, especially for its integrated lens cover and carrying case. The designers certainly had put a lot of thoughts into these design elements for their targeted market segment. I certainly wish other companies take notice of this. The thermal image quality, though, could be better for a 320 by 240 thermal imager, and I'm sure this is largely due to the thermal image module used inside. Some claims that they're using the Mosaic Core 320 by 240 lens module from Seek Thermal but I don't know that for sure. For its intended use, though, it certainly does its job. Price-wise, you can find it at between $350 to $400, depending on where you get it. And this is actually at a very attractive price point. If you use the coupon code provided below, you can get the ET692D for just under $350 from Banggood's website, and the price is valid till the mid of next month. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos like this in the future. I will catch up with you next time.